Hey y'all, Brother Avery here. I just wanted to welcome you to another Sunday night devotional with Pastor, and we've been in 1 Thessalonians. I've been encouraged. It's been a blessing to me and my family. I'm excited to get into chapter four tonight, but before we do so, a couple quick announcements that I have for you that we've been looking forward to is that we have our basketball camp coming up. It's for all of our kindergartners through third grade and then fourth and sixth graders, okay? So it's gonna be kind of split up in two different age groups, uh, but we want you to come out and be a part of that. That is going to be July 25th through the 28th. It's a Thursday, Friday, and a Saturday and Sunday. And then after church on Sunday night, which is our Sunday night service, we're gonna have a big get together afterwards. Um, we're gonna be serving some food. So please be there and uh, it'll be a blast. You won't wanna miss it. Get your kids involved in basketball camp this year. Pastor is going to come and give us his challenge from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Before he does so, we're going to listen to a worship set from just a few weeks ago. I was lost in shame, could not get past my blame until he called my name. I'm so glad he changed me, darkness held me down, but Jesus Thank you for taking some time to meet with us again on these Sunday night devotions for the summer of 2024. As you can see, uh, we're in the annex here where we just finished up with our Vacation Bible School a Summer Olympics theme. And what a day we had. And, and I just want to take a moment to thank all of the, the workers and the teachers and the, the leaders who uh, volunteered and put this all together. What an amazing day. And and God was honored and our young people have strengthened in the Lord. And a lot of people put a lot of work into it. So thank you, thank you. And our church uh, is just uh, so grateful to have all of you as a part of our church. We love you. Um, I want to take some time and we're into chapter four now of First Thessalonians. So take your Bibles and go with me if you would today. Remember now in the history, this is uh, kind of the theme or the 
um, the message of the whole outline of the book of 1 Thessalonians. Uh, you'll notice here that in chapters 1 through 3, uh, we're talking about the trials that they're going through. Uh, this little uh, church was started, wasn't little too, it grew huge, uh, huge numbers. Uh, three weeks Paul was preaching in Thessalonica and this church just uh, mushroomed out of that preaching services and uh, souls were being saved and, and it wasn't long till persecution came. Satan always tries to uh, defeat God's purposes and, and persecution came and Paul was... Uh, got out of town because of the uh, trials and the uh, threats on his life. And he ends up in Corinth and he's writing back to this early church. They're going through these trials and he's encouraging them. He's giving them uh, this letter uh, that's become canon of scripture now that we read that is so pertinent today in the day and age we live in. And then in chapters uh, four, it's talking about that temptations will come, trials will come, temptations will come, but here's the answer, Jesus is gonna come. And we're gonna get into that in the next couple of weeks. I'm excited about, about that, the purpose really of our whole summer. Uh, but today we wanna to go to chapter number four. So follow along with me in your Bible, if you would, as we read together. Verse number one, furthermore, then we beseech you or we beg you or urge you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus that ye have received of us how you ought to walk and to please God, so you would bound more and more. I want you to underline that little phrase, to please God. That ought to be the objective. That ought to be the goal of every Christian. That we have a heart, that we have a desire to please God. That we please Him not just in our words, but in our actions. That God, if there's things, this is my prayer, God, I want to please you. If there's things that I shouldn't be doing, show me. If there's things that are displeasing to you, show me. If there's things I should be doing. Because as a Christian, we ought to have a heart to please God. And that's what he's saying here, that that, that ought to be the heart of every Christian. And verse number two, for ye know what commandments or, uh, that we gave you by the Lord Jesus or what instruction that we've given you. And you know, it's not easy um, the day and age we live in. Um, a lot of people don't read the Bible. We don't know what God says, but as we learn the commandments and the instruction that we learn what it means to please God, the flesh is weak. We live in the 21st century and it's difficult, but as we learn, as we come to church, that's why it's important to be here in Bible study, to grow, to know what the instruction, the commandments of the Lord are. Verse 3, now here we go. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. This is the will of God, even your sanctification. What is sanctification, Pastor? Well, sanctification is, is really the process of transformation or the process of change, the ongoing change in the outward life or the physical life of a Christian. You see, when we were saved, um, it was a matter of the heart. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. It was, it was receiving Christ out of faith. But once we're saved, the process of change begins called sanctification. When we're saved, it's justification. When through this life, we're becoming more like Christ, sanctification, and someday, It'll be glorification. We'll be completely saved when we get to heaven. And so that's what he's talking about here. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. That, that word fornication here is an all-encompassing word, pharmakia. It's where we get our word pornography. It really is referring to all uh, sexual impurity, all immorality. And not just adultery, but the all-encompassing word. And, and so here's what he's saying. Uh, let's go on and read verse 4. That every one of you should know how to pro possess his vessel. That everyone should know how to control uh, their body, their vessel. 
in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, or not in this passionate lust, even as the Gentiles, which know not God, the Gentiles were known for some crazy, wild uh, um, immorality that was just unbelievable, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, uh, that, that, that you don't um, take advantage of someone for your own pleasure. That's what he's talking about here. And he goes on, because the Lord is the avenger, the Lord is the judge, he will punish, is what he's talking about, of all such, as we have also forewarned you and testified, for God hath not called us unto uncleanliness, but unto holiness. What is the will of God? For this is the will of God, your sanctification um, and abstaining from all sexual immorality. You know, I get this question all the time from so many, especially young people. You know, Pastor, I, I just want to know the will of God. You know, what, what should I do here? And what about over here? And how can I know God's will? And I always, I always start with this. Until you're willing to surrender, to follow the known will of God, God will not give you, you might say, the unknown will of God. It is in following the Bible, following the things we know, because there are many things in the Bible that plainly say this is the will of God. There's some here I want to share with you just in this, this book right here. The known will of God, chapter 4, verse 3. It says, this is the will of God to abstain, to avoid sexual sins. So what's the will of God? Well, it tells you. It, we'll find in chapter 5 in, in a few weeks to, to rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks, verse 18, give thanks in everything for this is the will of God. And so as Christians, uh, that, is, that ought to be the heart that, that we please God and to please God is to submitting to the known will of God. And he tells us what that is in this chapter here. Um, God, God gives us some instruction. And here's the two basic things. I've narrowed them down to these two basic things in the life of a Christian when it comes to uh, uh, morality and, and immorality um, is number one, abstinence for singles and faithfulness for married people. I, I know that seems simple, but that's, that's really the crux of it. We, listen, listen, all the young people, all the singles, all of those who are not married, listen to me, this is God's plan. This is God's will for your life. Then in the time that you are single, that you abstain from sexual sin. I, I know we're swimming upstream. I, I know that in society we're looked at as old fashioned or, or, or funny or whatever you might say. Matter of fact, I, I, I looked at these stats this week. Do you know that 78% of young people in America are sexually impure before marriage? That they live together or there's adultery, there, all this is going on. 78%. So we are swimming upstream. I found this to be very interesting. Very interesting. Among the millennials, uh, you know, somewhere in the ages of what, uh, you know, 20 to 40 now. Listen to this 32% only, I'll say only 32% said that they believed that pornography was wrong. But 58% said it's a sin not to recycle. It's just beyond me. And so it, we live in a time where the culture says one thing, but God's word. And so our decision is, are we going to obey it? Are we going to believe it? Are we going to agree and stand? Are we going to fall to the whims of the world? I, I know this is uh, not popular preaching. There's not much preaching in America on, on adultery and, and cheating on, on your wife or, or staying pure as a single and, and this, this, this morality that we need to have. There's not a lot of preaching because it's not popular, but the truth of the matter is the Bible is very clear and very plain in this area. Go with me to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And I'm going to show you a couple of verses here. You can see them on the screen as we close. Know ye not 
that your bodies are members of Christ. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body for two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that join, is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. I want you to uh, take time this week, uh, tonight, somewhere. You know, talk to your, your wife, your husband, your kids. You know, come up with a plan. How can we how can we train? How can we instruct? How can we help our children, our teenagers in this area? You can't put your head in the sand. You can't just turn your back. Listen, we need to be proactive in teaching and praying and getting, getting our children to church. Keep them in that youth group. Get them to camp. May God bless us as we endeavor to live out the will of God. Well, God bless you and uh, the Lord willing, we'll get into some of the most exciting parts of 1 Thessalonians next Sunday. God bless.